those safety measures do you have in place since then, regardless of the, the investigation that's going on? Clearly, there are some things that need to change. And, and if you haven't come up with them yet, when can we expect to hear from them? Because this isn't the first. This won't be the last. Um, people need to see change in, in a big way. And yeah, those are my questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, we believe that we had an environmentally sound remediation plan for the soil under the tracks. However, as I noted, as I continue to engage with members of East Palestine in one-on-one -on -one meetings and small can I, group can meetings. Can I interrupt you? What made you believe, I got, what made you believe that that was an okay resolution? That's what I'm looking for. Like what, what uh, goes into that decision? Uh, yes. Um, our independent environmental experts. So, so as, as we have, as I have engaged of When you dump 100,000 gallons of chemicals and oil. A, and oil. You're not talking about the 60, oil. 60,000 gallons of oil. When you dump that into the ground and you don't take that out of the ground before you put your tracks on and you run your train on it. You need to hire some new. That's uh, an okay experts. decision. The oil, ma'am. The oil is going to cause us the long-term effects. The chem. Everybody's talking about the chemicals, and while I do think that's important, it's the oil that's seeping into our ground that you chose not to dig up and just put your tracks right over top of it. She's asking you specifically. Dude, this is pretty sick. Oh. It's like you always say about the power white women have. Yeah. No, this is pretty fucking fire. Like, having a CEO wearing his fucking Patagonia fit, like, this is his casual fit, you know what I mean? Have to sit there and listen to, like, some of the victims. Goddamn, it's cool. I love, I love that, dude. You don't see that every day. I'm a fan of what's going on in front of me right now. I, I, I mean, it should be way more than that. Like, jail could be fun. You know what I mean? Like, that could be cool. Like, legal repercussions. I, I like stuff like that. Big fan of legal repercussions. Um, but, you know, it's not going to happen. So this is this is what we got in the process. Uh, this is what we got instead. And I'm on board with it. I like it. The ground before you put your tracks on and you run your train on it. You need to hire some new That's uh, an okay experts. decision. The oil... Ma'am. The oil is going to cause us the long-term effects. The chem Everybody's talking about the chemicals. And while I do think that's important, it's the oil that's seeping into our ground that you chose not to dig up and just put your tracks right over top of it. She's asking you specifically, what led you to that decision? Ma'am, we've made a lot of progress. <laughs> He's a, he has a, are you done ass face right now too? Like the, are you done now? Are you done? Okay, That's let me tell, let me tell you what happened. We've dug up 4,600 cubic yards of soil and collected 1.7 million gallons of water. We will continue with the environmental re remediation. And in early March, we will start by tearing up the tracks and digging up the soil underneath the tracks. I wonder why he's not there in person. Uh, you're right, Megafon. He's a good question. Uh, it'd be nice if he was there in person. It'd be even better. Six weeks, oil's going to be soaking into our soil. So until. By the way, this is like the the least sociopathic CEO. Okay, this is a CEO trying to you know to to defeat the lizard allegations right now he is just this is him trying he cranked up his like sympathy dial uh and and maxed out on it and this is all you're gonna get like the ugh why do i have to talk to you fucking peasants ugh i hate that i have to do this oh my god like we fucking poison towns that are larger than east palestine and forget about it i've forgotten more fucking rural towns that i've poisoned 
than uh, than than uh, I have to think about. And you're over here fucking questioning me. How dare you question my authority? You don't understand how fucking difficult business is. Okay, you don't know what it's like when you have to take seven billion dollars, seven point five billion dollars, and repurpose them for stock buybacks. You don't know what that's like. Okay, you don't know what it's like to be in my shoes. Well, then we'll just have it keep going down. Keep going in, in our, our soils. Janet, did you get all your questions answered? No, I did specifically ask what changes you've already made. And, and I think these residents also are, are very valid in asking, like, why the delay? Why can't we do it tomorrow? Yeah, Janice, thank you for that. I didn't get it. Um, it's I Jenna. didn't get the just respond it's, to that. It's Jenna. Yeah, we, we're going <laughs> to... My, my apologies. Bro, we should let CEOs do this kind of PR shit more often, dude. They're fucking... I, the more the more Americans understand what soulless husks these motherfuckers are, the better. Oh, man, I love this. Oh, oh, this is so good. Ooh, it's so fucking good. We're going we're gonna to test and we're going to calibrate all of our the wayside detectors all across our system. Um, that's something that we stood up in the immediate aftermath of this. And is that something that's visible for people to see? Is it publicly available for us to see that that's being done? Um, it's, it's an internal component to Norfolk Southern. Don't you we're, think people would want to see it. that happening? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that show that you're trying to do something different if you're ch actively showing people this? No, yeah, the problem is he doesn't give a shit. He don't give a shit. He's the CEO of Norfolk Southern. Man's coat switching with his wardrobe. He still looks like an out-of-touch CEO. Black fleece vest. Need I say more? Yes, this is his casual look. Don't you love that? Like, this is... Every, every part of this is, like, predetermined and, and uh, manicured, okay? And this is the best he's got. Yeah, he's looking like a Kelly Loeffler campaign ad. Exactly. And he's still not doing it. He can't. We can certainly take videos of that. <clears throat> and post it. Um, it, it what we have done is we stood a up a website. Thing. What we have done, based on feedback that we've gotten from the citizens, oh. is we stood up a website, um, nsmakingitright.com, and we're providing updates every day on the environmental remediation. We're providing updates every day on the financial assistance for the community. Uh, Mr. Shaw, one of the questions that, that Jenna uh, asked that you didn't answer had to do with the fact that Obviously, whatever Norfolk Southern was doing uh, almost three weeks ago wasn't sufficient in terms of safety. And she's, her question was basically, you don't need to wait for the federal government or Governor DeWine to tell you to improve things. For example, if it's true, as, Gov as uh, Senator J.D. Vance notes, having two staffers and a trainee on a 150-car train would not seem sufficient. Um, in the view of Republican Governor Vance. So her question is, um, Se Senator Vance, her question is, what are you asking your team to do now to change it before the government makes you change it? Because you are in charge of the company. You can... Why the fuck would they change anything before the government makes them change it, dude? Come on now. That's the entire, po That's the entire point and purpose of the regulatory body. Because these motherfuckers never do anything out of the kindness of their hearts. If anything, this is actually, this kind of like, uh, you know, capitalism being like overall indecent is baked into the narrative, even a, a narrative that libertarians understand, right? Because libertarians, what do they always say? They're like, oh, you don't need a regulatory agency. What you need is a Yelp review system to basically like fucking yell at corporations and the free market will kick in. And it's like, that's still comes with an understanding that like corporations are going to cut corners regardless. And the only thing, something needs to stop them from doing that. And it's never going to be their own personal willingness to not cut corners, right? It's the consumers that will stop them from cutting corners, which is laughable. It's silly. It's stupid. But even then they still recognize that corporations are going to cut fucking corners. They're going to cut corners with whatever the fuck they can get away with. You know what I mean? 
So it still happens. It, it still happens even in their, even in the libertarian solution, they still operate with an understanding that corporations are going to de, uh, push for deregulation. They're going to get away with whatever the fuck they can. Huh. make those changes. And yes, if you spend a billion dollars on safety, that's great. Of course, your profits are in the multi-billion dollars every year. Yeah, we're, we're also advancing um, technology on our locomotives to check the, inspect the tracks as our trains run over the tracks. Uh, we're, we're looking for the results from the NTSB the investigation to find the root cause of this, which is one of the reasons that we're cooperating fully with the NTSB and the FRA. We'll learn from this. Um, it, what we had in place didn't work here. We're going to figure this out, and we're going to make the investments to make Norfolk Southern safer. I want to bring in Jim Stewart, who has a question for you, sir. Yeah, um, a lot of this that I have to ask has been answered already. Uh, but I'm speaking on the aspect that we, the people of East Palestine, are just being treated like dummies. We're not dummies. We're smart people. Listen to these people, what they have found out about different things and everything else. I'm angry. I'm angry about this. I've lived in East Palestine for 65 years now. That's my home. My grandmother came from Germany. She lived in Palestine. My dad grew up there. What? My family's grown up there now. And it is disgusting that we're just lost it. I live in a house that's probably the closest of any of these. And, and it's a shame. And this is probably the next closest one. And our house is, you know, it's been inspected. It's been this, it's been that. I'm afraid to put my dog out just to pee. I mean, he's only on this tall. So, you know, I, I don't feel safe in this town now. You took it away from me. You took us away from this. You seem like a sincere man. I'm not calling you names. I'm not, you know, but your company stinks. Because I mean, his job is literally to stink up the place for the record. Like if there's what I'm never like, uh, I'm never an advocate for like a singular individual being held responsible for any kind of thing. Uh, but you know, if you want to look for a person to blame, like this guy pretty much is the guy, you know what I mean? Like that's the guy for sure. Like this wasn't, uh, this wasn't like, you know, Oh, things got out of hand and people, uh, you know, mid-level managers uh, decided to take actions that, uh, you know, that were completely outside of the control of, like, uh, you know, people at, in higher levels of power, in higher positions of power. Like, this is the guy who pretty much is telling the mid-level managers to do exactly the things he wants to do. You know what I mean? They're not watching what's How going is on. this lib shit? What, I didn't say that. Workers don't pay attention nowadays. Supervisors make workers work. you got to do something about this. I lost a lot. I lost the value of my home. I'm only one block. I can throw a stone to that burner. And what do we do now? I come back from Chicago for four days. I was in Chicago for four days. I came home the other day. I put the garage door up. I got pulled, we pulled in the garage. Yes, chat. He's blaming workers. This is a 65 year old man. Okay. He's a 65 year old man. He literally said, I'm not a dummy. You seem like a sincere guy. It doesn't matter though. He doesn't deserve this uh, happening to him. Okay. He's a 65 year old in Ohio. What the fuck do you think his worldview is? Calm the fuck down. You know what I mean? Stop getting annoyed at a victim. <laughs> okay. Got out of the car, put the garage down. down. His entire worldview revolves around literally fucking looking up to guys like this, you know, thinking that the CEOs are sincere and thinking that the workers probably uh, fucked it up, okay? That's his worldview. Examine why that worldview exists and develop a better understanding 
of the systems that educate people, that that uh, churn millions of people like that out, and also recognize that, you know, just because he has a different political perspective than you do doesn't change the reality that he's still a fucking victim. Yeah, a lot of the people, I don't know what East Palestine's, like, voting uh, demographics look like. I don't know what they fucking voted for. But, I'm, I mean, it's Ohio, so it's not shocking to me that it would be, like, deep red. So these people did technically vote for the very deregulation that they ended up, uh, you know, receiving the brunt, uh, receiving the the consequences of. But ultimately, even if they didn't fucking vote for uh, the the Republican Party, it doesn't matter. It's like people that vote for Democrats are, are getting poisoned. Does that make it? Uh, does that make it? Uh, do, do, does that make these people less victims? No. There's no you reap what you sow. When we talk about, there is no you reap what you sow. When we talk about these kinds of these kinds of uh, issues, we live in a bourgeois. Uh, we live in a capitalist organization of the economy. This is a bourgeois government. Both the Democrats and the Republicans, as I tell you all the fucking time, are still going to poison you. Okay, they're still going to advocate for either slight deregulation or heavy deregulation. Okay, and most of the time, these people are just powerless. Like they're just playing the role of. Do, uh, they're just. Playing the role just as you are, okay? Going through the motions, you know? Doing their, doing their civic duty, voting for one party over the other. Okay? You will not come across... You will not come across as understanding if you look at a 65-year-old man who is naturally fearful that, like, his house is fucked now, Okay? Like, uh, by, by being like, well, you voted for it. You know what I mean? It's fucking bullshit. Use this as an opportunity, be sympathetic, and use this as an opportunity to explain to people, like, look, listen, you know, Democrats are bad too, but this is a consequence of deregulation, and that knows no boundaries. That knows no political ideology. That is a capitalist attitude. I hate that... Now, I'm 65 years old, a diabetic, AFib hearts, heart disease, everything. Now, did you shorten my life now? I want to retire and enjoy it. How are we going to enjoy it? You, you burned me. We were going to sell our house. Our value went poof. You know, I, do I mow the grass? Do I, can I plant tomatoes next summer? What can I do? I'm afraid to. You know, and it's in the air. Every day I cough. Three cough, a little cough here, a little cough there. I've never had that. You know, I, I got rashes on my cheeks and all of my arms from the, from the derailment. I don't call it a derailment. I call it a disaster. It's Norfolk's disaster, not a train derailment. I'm an honest. I shoot from the hip, just like the governor just told us. So I tell, the shoot, tell you the truth. You seem like a family and a great guy and all, but you know what? Like I said, your, your company has to do something. How are you going to make it up to him, Mr. Shaw? How are you going to make it up to Jim Stewart and, and all the other families? <clears throat> Jim, thank you for those comments. I, I hear you. Um, I'm terribly sorry that this has happened to this community. What I can do and what I will do is make it right. We're going to get the cleanup right. We're going to reimburse the citizens. We're going to invest in the long-term health of this community. I'm going to see this through. And we're going to be here. And we're going to work with these community leaders to help it thrive. I think you heard the mayor talk about, you know, making this community even better. Uh -huh. and that's, that's what I'm picking it's up. It's kind of shit right now. The community leaders and citizens. You know, we're looking for ideas from the community. On, on where we can help and things that, that we can do. Well, would you be um, willing to buy their houses? That's why we have somebody. Yeah. Will, you, will you buy them out of their houses at the mm. property value so they can, so Jim can retire? Is that, is that, that's making it right. We're, Step up. We're going to, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I, I, I interrupted you. <laughs> You're good. Uh, Jim wants to hear your answer. We're going to do what's right for this community. Well, that's, that's what's right. Commitment. But did you, your derailment, did it change me now? It's changed. It's made me an angry man. I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. 
but you've made me angry. And I don't want to be like that. I want, I, you know, I want you to respect me like I respect you right now. And, and like I said, what? I lost everything now. I worked hard. I'm, working, I'm still working. I'm my 44th year at my job. I want to get out. Now I'm just stuck. Wait, that's it? <laughs>